Howdy folks and welcome to another episode of Workshop Wednesday. So, coronavirus. Everybody self-isolating? Those of you who are able to self-isolate? For myself, I think I'm entering my 15th year of self-isolation. <laughs> that moment when you realise that what everybody else refers to as quarantine is just how you live. Yeah. Oh no, I have to stay indoors and have everything that I need delivered. Yeah, that's not exactly a massive lifestyle change for me. But anyway, Workshop Wednesday. We've built the KV-2, we've assembled the ammunition and ammo crates. Now we need to put the crew together. So this is the 135th scale Soviet tank crew at rest kit from Miniart. I really, really like Miniart's stuff. I mean, they do model kits of vehicles, tanks, you know, as well. But the thing that they do better than most everybody else are the accessories that go with them, like this crew. So let's get it opened and see exactly what we have in here. I mean, I'm expecting five crew members in the various different poses illustrated on the box, but apparently there are also, yep, some ammunition crates in here. Now, I think they're 85mm shells, so they're the wrong calibre shells for the KV-2, but they all come in the same ammunition boxes, so I can put an extra stack of ammo crates on the model KV-2 if I want. I just have to make sure that they're all sealed. So that's good. I like the variation that they have amongst the various different crew members here. They're not all wearing the same thing. Some of them are in black coveralls, some of them are in navy blue coveralls. One of them's half in and half out of a set of navy blue coveralls. And one of them's just standing around with his hands in his pockets in regular Russian army uniform with the addition of a tanker's padded hat. I like that about the American tank crew kit that I put together for the M3 lead diorama. I mean, they were all in uniform, but they weren't uniform, if you know what I mean. They were all wearing tankers' padded jackets, but some of them were wearing them over coveralls, some of them were wearing over regular twill trousers, some of them had boots, some of them had gaiters, some of them were wearing gloves, some weren't, some had goggles on the helmets, some didn't. I like the variation that Mini Art do try to put into these kits, even when everybody's supposed to be wearing the same uniform. And that's one of the things about the Russian tank crews. The uniforms that they were issued weren't all exactly the same. Some had black coveralls, some had blue coveralls. Some didn't wear coveralls. And we've got all of those represented here. Now that's a good thing and it's a bad thing. It's a good thing because we've got some nice variation among the various different crew members. It's a bad thing because some of them are wearing black coveralls. See, the thing about painting miniatures is that there are two colours that are extremely difficult to do. If you're trying to paint something that's white, trying to get any kind of definition and contrast on it is extremely difficult. And the other colour that's extremely difficult to do is black. Bugger. There are a number of different techniques that you can use to try to bring out contrast and highlight on something that's basically black. Probably the most effective, but also the most time-consuming method is to just not paint it black at all. Instead, paint it a shade of dark grey, and then apply a black wash so that you get lots of nice black shadows and recesses. Then, using whatever highlighting technique you prefer, go over the raised edges with a shade of dark grey, successively lighter shades of dark grey, or even a dark blue. Uh, glazing works very well for this, but is an even more time-consuming process. And at the time I was doing this, I'd also never glazed anything before, and I wasn't entirely sure how to do it. Another technique is to paint it black, and then dry brush it in shades of lighter grey over the top. Dry brushing involves taking, well, a brush that you don't really value much, because dry brushing does tend to ruin brushes, uh, soaking up some of the pigment that you want to apply and then drying it out on a cloth or a piece of tissue until very, very small trace amounts of paint remain. And then basically dragging the brush over the raised edges, which will leave a very, very fine application of your lighter colour over those highlights. The problem with dry brushing, aside from the fact that it destroys brushes, is that it's also not a particularly precise technique. It's great for doing large areas that need highlighting. Vehicles, for example. Tanks. Things with lots of rivets popping out. Dry brushing is pretty good for that sort of thing. 
For smaller areas of fine detail, not so much. I'm not doing this, of course. Instead, I'm using a more traditional technique and I'm just painting the highlights straight onto the figure. Now, you can get very good results doing this. There are techniques such as wet blending that you can use, which basically involves having the black paint still slightly wet and the highlight paint, in this case dark grey, obviously also wet, and then feathering the edges into each other so you get that nice blended look. Now, obviously I'm not wet blending here for two reasons. One, I've never wet blended anything before, and two, I've let the black paint dry, so I can't do any wet blending. Another technique that I could have used, and if I had a bit more confidence I probably should have used, would have been glazing. Now, I know how to do glazing now, because I experimented on the Meng World War II's Tiger I um, with glazing to get the highlights on the gun barrel and the machine gun ball mount and various other parts of the tank. But at the time I was doing this, glazing is something else that I'd never tried before. Now glazing is a very, very nice technique, but it is very time consuming. What it involves is you take a mid-tone between the black, that's my base coat, and the dark grey, that's my highlight colour, so a slightly darker shade of grey. You then water it down until it's the consistency of an ink wash. Or more importantly, until it's the translucency of a wash. You want it to be slightly transparent. What you don't want is to have it the consistency of a wash. It's far too uh, fluid. You don't want it running off into all the recesses and lightening them. That's the exact opposite of what you want. So instead, you load up your brush with some of the glaze and then you dry it off on a cloth or a piece of tissue paper. So this gives you more control over where the paint goes. And you then use the glaze to go over the edges of your highlights. This will have the effect of darkening the edge of the highlight and lightening the edge of the base coat, which is black. And if you apply the glaze around the edges of the highlights enough times, eventually you won't be able to see where the highlight ends and the undercoat begins. They'll be blended into each other very, very nicely. It's an exceptionally good technique, but it is very time consuming. And of course I'm not doing that here because at the time I didn't actually know how to do it. So my end result could be a lot better. I soldiered on using the same technique on the next crewman. But again, the highlights really just weren't working. So I decided to undercoat again, this time using a dark shade of grey basically doing exactly what it was I suggested I probably should have done right at the start of this video. Instead of just painting the black coveralls black, I'm painting them in dark grey and then I'm going to wash them in black. Before I started applying the black wash I was kind of worried that the dark grey base was a little bit too light. As it happens I think it might have been a little bit too dark. Because let's not forget, when you're applying a wash, I'm using Citadel's Null Oil Shade Paint here, the old skill in a bottle, um, it does pool in all the recesses and makes them really, really dark, but it also shades the undercoat at the same time, if you apply it all over. And it's darkening that, well, I don't know, I mean it's definitely not looking dark grey anymore, but is there going to be enough definition between the base coat and the shadows of the recesses. I guess we're just going to have to wait for it to dry out and find out. I may end up having to go over and apply some highlights as well, but we'll, we'll see how it looks when it's dried out. While the second crewman's drying out, I'm applying the same dark, well a slightly lighter shade this time, of dark grey base coat to the third crewman. Now at this point I've got no doubt that several of you are saying, well hang on Jingles, if not all Soviet World War II tank crew wore the same uniforms, if some of them wore black coveralls and some of them wore dark blue coveralls, why not just save yourself the heartache and paint them all in dark blue coveralls? I have to admit that thought did occur to me, but I like the variation. I want some of them to be in black coveralls and, well, I'm learning. <laughs> Don't forget, I'm not an expert at this. I'm very much learning as I go along. 
So this experimentation was actually, well, it was useful. You don't have to produce a masterpiece every time you put paint on a model. I mean, it would be nice if you could produce a masterpiece every time you put paint on a model, but most of us can't. I think for most of us, what's more important every time you sit down in front of a model with a paintbrush in your hand isn't that you produce something that's absolutely amazing, although it would be nice if you could, but you produce something that's better than the last thing that you painted. If you can do that, you haven't wasted your time. Well, if you've enjoyed yourself, you also haven't wasted your time, but if you can enjoy yourself while producing something that was better than the last thing that you painted, I think that's definitely the most profitable use of your time. Back to crewman number one. Now, I've done some remedial work on him as well. Despite my earlier misgivings about dry brushing on something as small as these tank crewmen, it's worked out quite well. I could just leave him like this, because you'd imagine that his coveralls have been through a few washers, and they would have faded. But I... I don't know. I think the edge does need to be taken off that uh, pale grey, so I'm going to apply a thin black wash over the top of everything, just to try to blend the edges in. And that means it's time for the old skill in a bottle again. Citadel Nuln Oil Shade Paint. Now this is going to make everything really, really shiny, so I'm going to have to apply a coat of matte varnish over the top of everything once this is dry. But we'll see how it looks. And the end result, even though it hasn't even started drying yet, is... acceptable. I mean, I could wait for that shade to dry, and then go over the highlights again with another shade of dark grey, but I've been down that road far too many times in the process of painting uh, these crewmen. I, I need to learn to quit when I'm ahead. So the shade hasn't dried on crewman number one, but it has dried on crewman number two and three. Crewman number two, come on down. Let's take a look at you. Enjoy the crafty smoke break there. Yeah, it'll do. That's definitely good enough. Crew number three. Where is he? Come on, he's not that big. He can't have escaped. There we go. So, I mean, I took a long-winded way of getting there, but I did get there eventually. And of course, there are five crewmen in this kit, not three, and don't worry, I had to get around to doing the other two as well. And this... Well, it's not quite the finished result, as you can tell by the way the paint's been rubbed off the exposed tips of their boots where I've been handling them. I need to repaint their boots uh, and get some varnish on there to protect them from any further handling attempts. But other than that, pretty much done. Well, at least as far as the crew, the ammunition boxes and the tanks are concerned. There's also a bunch of uh, Russian infantry resting nearby that I need to assemble and paint and a bunch of German soldiers being escorted behind the lines, and then of course I have to actually build the whole diorama to put them on. But I have all of the materials that I need to do it. I've got my tile grout, I've got my extruded polystyrene foam, I've got my styrene card, I've got my wooden bases. It's all ready to go. Next, we're going to be doing the infantry. But for now, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.